Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent. A goal joining you on Saturday, pretty early as well. I'm recording this Saturday morning, so apologies if I sound like a bit of a bumbling wreck. But uh, yeah, I only just woke up, my kids jumping on me. Got to take them out today, keep them entertained in the sunshine. But I wanted to do a video and talk about last night's game, or yesterday afternoon's game. Anyway, before I went, um, really good game, wasn't it, for a pre-season? I mean, it was a game of two halves, half-time, sort of 2-0 down, thinking, oh my God, here we go again, new season. And uh, and then, yeah, like that, Gabriel Jesus came on and, and just what a second half. Five goals for Arsenal, conceded another one, ended up winning 5-3 over in Germany in Nuremberg. But really enjoyable second half. Um, and it was very, very difficult not to be excited, wasn't it? Well, after what we saw from Gabriel Jesus, yes, I know it's pre-season. Yes, the standard opposition wasn't the greatest. But to come on and make an impact like that straight away, you know, he scored 90 seconds <laughs> into his debut. I mean, you don't get much better than that, do you? And then he added another one, you know, kind of forced a couple of own goals as well just by his presence in and around the six-yard box. His runs, his movement, I loved the second. I mean, the first goal was great, don't get me wrong. Um, and was probably the more eye-catching of the two because of the run and the finish. But I loved the second goal, that movement to get across at the near post. And, you know, really lovely finish as well from Martinelli's cross. And I thought Martinelli was excellent as well when he came on. It was just really, really good to see. And, um, and just to see that strike out of that presence all around that penalty area, just the movement constantly popping up all around, wanting to get on the end of crosses and, you know, sort of busting a gut to get on the end of crosses as well. It was just really, really exciting. And that's what Gabriel Jesus has been signed for. It's why Mikel Arteta was so desperate to get him in. And you could, you could see how delighted was. You could hear how delighted was Mikel Arteta was afterwards when he was talking about Jesus' performance. And there was other plenty of good performances as well. Like I said, I thought Martinelli came on, did really well. I mean, Mohamed Elneny as well. What a goal from Elneny. He certainly, when he does score, they are very, very special, aren't they? beautiful strike from distance straight into corner almost got a second one as well but the keeper saved that one so he made a big difference um martinelli jesus so there were sort of three subs that came on at half time i thought charlie patino's cameo when he came on sort of 68 minutes i think they had a host of players like balligan patino Salah all came on and a couple of them sort of struggled marquinos as well they kind of struggled to really make too much of an impact but i was really impressed by patino and what i saw from him in terms of he's clearly bulked up you can see that he looks an awful lot stronger now and just when he's on the ball, he's just really tidy. He's always looking to move it. He's always trying to get in and around the penalty area as well and sort of create that extra man in those areas. And I thought it was a tidy performance from Patino. It's a big pre-season for him. He, he needs to make a mark this pre-season. I think we all want him to make a mark. And I thought that was quite a positive step, positive start anyway to the summer for him. Obviously, Jesus was the headline act. It was no, There's no denying it was just such a brilliant performance <laughs> exciting performance and it's what Mikel said afterwards he said he's all energy you see his enthusiasm he's always smiling always talking to his teammates and apart from that I think he brings a different level of desire and commitment and enthusiasm so I think it's really good that's why we brought him here to put the ball in the back of the net and obviously for his confidence for him to believe in what we're doing I think it's really important that he's settled well and you it is. I mean, look, it's, it was only a friendly, so it doesn't count as a proper debut goal or anything like that. But just the fact that he scored in an Arsenal shirt so early and he's kind of got that off his back already because as a striker, no matter who you are, you want to score early. And the fact he's done that, he's shown the fans what he's about. Really, really important, I think, for, for Arsenal and for the summer and for hopefully the start of the season because he's just he needed Jesus to hit the ground running. And it certainly looked like, um, looks like he's done that. And I thought it was very interesting in that second half when he did bring... Um, Jesus on that he didn't take in Ketia off he played the pair of them together and um, and for Eddie played really really well in the second half first half he was completely isolated and barely got a kick second half when Arsenal had more of the ball and were attacking in the final third lot uh, I thought and Ketia came alive brilliant shot that hit the bar for one of the own goals linked up really well with Jesus for uh, the first goal played a part in the um, first own goal as well he was just always in and around the area in Eddie I thought he played really well and Mikel said um, when he was asked after the game, you know, do, do you see those two you know, potentially playing together this season rather than it being one or the other? And he said, that's why I played them, because we want to try in pre-season things that we want to do in the season. We're going to have a lot of games, a lot of moments where we need to play in different ways. And that's great because they are both in top form. The understanding with Eddie as well has been really good. It's something that we want to have as an option this year, especially with five subs. So I think from that, you can kind of gather that it may not be the first option in terms of pairing them as a two from the start but you know as an option in the second half to bring them on play them together up top um 
you know, it's certainly something that Mikel's looking at. I think that's going to be a real positive as well, having two proper strikers in and around the penalty area if needed. And, um, you know, the five subs rule there is just so, so important. It's going to make such a big difference. It's why the squad has to be really, really strong this season. And, um, yeah, I thought that was, a, that was a positive as well. And hopefully now, I mean, the players, they came back straight after the game and uh, they'll be flying out early to the States next week. All the players who weren't involved, as in the international players from European teams, they will be back on Monday. So your Salibas, uh, Saliba, Saka, Odegaard, Ramsdale, those sort of players all coming back. Uh, Tommy Asu as well, uh, Tavares, um, all, all those sort of players coming back. And then they'll be joining up with the squad. I think I think they fly out on Tuesday or Wednesday. I can't remember which day it is. But um, yeah, they'll all go out together and it'll be a much stronger team, much stronger squad that we see go over for the United States game next week, which is Chelsea, Everton and Orlando City. Okay, so a few things to take from that game. First of all, Kieran Tierney, I mean, had loads of messages, what's going on with Tierney? Because he went off in that first half, looked a bit of a worry to suddenly see him go off before half-time, but it was a pre-planned thing. Um, it, was, it wasn't an injury or anything like that. It was always pre-planned. He, was, he did a big warm down at half-time, Tierney, you know, and then Mikel said afterwards, Kieran could only play 30 minutes, and we wanted to give him the first 30 to have a good warm-up as well after such a long time. So it's a pre-planned thing. I mean, you've got to remember Tierney, that was his first game since March, I think. He'd only come back to training sort of last week. He didn't even do it at uh, London Colney before they went to Germany. So he's behind everyone else as well. So it's just a case of getting half an hour's game time into Tierney's legs and then they'll build that up during the trip to the United States. So nothing to worry about in terms of Kieran Tierney, which was good. It was good to see him back. He looked rusty, but that's understandable. I thought a lot of players looked rusty, especially in that first half. Um, and you know Tierney when he's only hasn't played since March he's never going to just come back like that and be at 100% so no injuries for him um, Mikel was talking about transfers a little bit as much as Mikel ever talks about transfers after the game he was asked a couple of questions by the um, the uh, journalists who are over there um, you know he was asked is that it are you done with your squad now or do you want more he said there are more things that we would like to do if we can obviously the market will dictate what we can do so far we are happy with what we've done. He was then asked specifically about Yuri Tielemans. Is he a player that you want to bring in? And he said, we'd never talk about players that are not ours. No change there. As I said before, we can still improve the team in the market and we're going to try to do it, but I won't go into specific names. So there's no doubt Arsenal are not finished in the transfer market. There's no way. I'd, I'll, I'll eat my hat if Arsenal don't sign anyone between now and the end of the transfer window. They're trying, we know that. The bid for players haven't been successful yet, but they are trying for players. Whether it'll, Tielemans will come in, I don't know. We have to wait and see. Like I've reported before, that was something that had called while well, they focused on other targets, but the interest was still there. And as I said before, it would not surprise me if they went back in for him at some point during the transfer window because so much of the groundwork with Tielemans and his agents have already been done. We'll have to wait and see if it happens, but you know, we'll see what happens with Martinez as well. And uh, We know they've bid heavily for Rafinha. Doesn't look like that's going to come off because of it looks like Rafinha, you know, he's so desperate to go to Barcelona. But even if it doesn't, then, you know, that money's clearly still there to bid for players. So I, I'll be absolutely stunned if Arsenal don't do uh, more business, more significant business before the end of the transfer window. It's just a case of waiting and seeing what happens over the uh, the coming weeks. But yeah, that's what Mikel had to say about transfers. Let me know what you guys think, obviously, uh, about the match, about who impressed you, who didn't impress you, what you think of Mikel's comments about transfers you know who do you want to see arrive in the next few weeks what are the priority areas that Arsenal should be targeting now this summer let me know as always in the comments below keen to get your thoughts and opinion as always okay Jack Wiltshire this is quite big news Jack Wiltshire obviously announcing his retirement yesterday that big emotional open letter that he put out on social media I'm sure most of you have already seen it um Quite yeah, it was it was it was quite a difficult read really for someone I don't know you know sort of me taking my journalist hat off and take, putting my fan hat on, you know I came you know I was, when Jack came through, you know I was there every step of the way watching it and it was just you know he was one of our own it was just we, everyone wanted him to live up to his potential and be as good as he could be because we all knew how good he was I'll never forget that performance against Barcelona it's one of my favourite ever matches I've been to. Just seeing that performance from an 18-year-old kid against that Barcelona team, you know, it's the stuff of legend. It's going down in Arsenal folklore. And we all wanted that to continue. And it was such a shame to see what happened afterwards. And, you know, yes, he still played a lot of games. He won trophies. But there's no doubt about it. And he admits it himself. I interviewed him a couple of months ago and he admitted himself that he didn't, he wasn't able to get the most out of his career because of because of the injuries. And, 
Um, it was clearly that was saying it was such a shame, you know, not just for Arsenal but for England because it was a generational talent, Jack Wiltshire, no doubt about it. So it was tough to read that letter. I mean, he's only 30. He should still have four or five years left at the top level, such as his quality. But unfortunately, his body just couldn't couldn't cope. The injuries took it took their toll. And um, and now he's had to hang up his boots at 30. And it, and it was a real, real shame. And during that interview I did with him a couple of months ago, you could tell he was so desperate to carry on. He really wanted to. He admitted that you know he wouldn't be sad to hang up his boots because he, if, if a good sort of coaching opportunity came his way because that's what he was moving into now. But you could still tell he longed to still be able to play football and be within that environment and get more out of himself. But he knew deep down, he'd been over to Denmark, obviously, he knew deep down, he just couldn't perform at the level that he knew he wanted to perform at, that he was used to performing at. And I think that was really difficult for him. And you could t- I could tell that during that interview. Uh, I posted the link to it yesterday on my socials, again, if in case you haven't read it yet. It was really, you know, you just listen to what you have to say. It was quite, it was quite deep stuff from Jack. But he did mention in that, as I said, that he wouldn't be sad to hang up his boots if a good coaching opportunity came his way. And now a good coaching opportunity has come his way because Jack Wiltshire is now very close to being appointed Arsenal's new under-18s coach. So still a little bit left to find lies before it's all confirmed and announced but that is edging towards completion now and Jack Wiltshire should if everything goes well be confirmed as Arsenal's new 18 heads coach uh, 18's coach obviously came back to the club last season while he was doing all his training with the club he was coaching with the academy he loved it he's got a really good relationship with Per Mertesacker and so when um, the changes happen at under 23s and under 18s level this summer with uh, with the departures that sort of opened up these positions that are available at the club and there's going to be movement now um, for, in terms of a new under-23s coach being appointed. And But the under-18s coach, that's going to be Jack Wiltshire. And, you know, interviews have taken place per Mertesacker has led the recruitment po- process. Um, and Jack is now very, very close to um, that role. And I think that's great. And I think the players are going to love that. The, and the kids that he's going to work with are going to love that. He, he was he made such a big impact last season when he was working in and around the academy, Jack Wiltshire. You know, this is the poster boy of Hayland, really. Certainly the first big poster boy of, of Hayland. And um, to sort of have him back at the club, to work him with the next next group of talent, I think it's going to be fantastic. And when you kind of look at Arsenal at the moment, in all a lot of the key positions, you've got, Mikel Arteta, former player. Per Mertesacker, former player, now academy manager. Edu, technical director, former player. Jack Wiltshire, former player, under-18s coach. You know, it's just that con- continu- continuity of having, you know, proper Arsenal people in these proper positions. And I think that's that's a really good thing for the club. And, um, yeah, and hopefully Jack goes on to have a fantastic coaching career and it, and it all starts in this under-18s. He can work his way up and he can stay at Arsenal for the foreseeable future. So that's the latest on Jack Wiltshire. And I'm sure you're, you guys are as happy as me to see him back at the club when it's appointed. Obviously, it hasn't actually been confirmed yet. All right, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Have a very good weekend wherever you are around the world. If you're here in the UK like me, you're going to head out and enjoy the sunshine today. It's going to be an absolute scorcher. Before I go, I've got to say RIP to Tony Sirico. Uh, if any of you massive Sopranos fans like me are out there watching this, you know exactly who Tony is. Paulie Walnuts, one of the greatest TV characters of all time. And uh, woke up this morning to the really sad news that he had passed away at the age of 79. So, salut Tony. Uh, rest well. Have a good one, everyone. I'll speak to you soon.